Your king wasn't always as cold and cruel, but an assassin murdering his father twisted his heart. You were the only one spared the dull brunt of his wrath, but even the love you used to share with him hasn't stopped him from causing you harm. He came to rescue you from the prince that took you away, was imprisoned, but treated well. Now you are just trying to determine your feelings between the kind, genuine Prince Yvonne, your current fiancé, or Alastair, the cruel king you unfortunately fell in love with. Yvonne sits next to you in bed, doing a bit of reading as you wind down. I really am not mad that you went to see him, darling. I knew you would. I just wish you felt safe enough to tell me. Darling, really. I'm honestly surprised he'd drink that much water just to try and, well, accomplish something. Charmed water can provide relief, even clarity, but it won't just fix him. A favor? Very well. How can this prince please his pearl? Hmm? A kiss? <laughs> May I ask why? Hmm. You want to see how I kiss? To judge against him, or... Yvonne smiles, a bit sad. Very well. I will show you what a gentle kiss tastes like. Come here. Come here, love, and rest your palms on my chest. You move closer, keeping a careful eye on your fiancé as you settle against him. There we are. There we are. Now, let me see those beautiful lips. He kisses you, and you brace, only to find it especially gentle and patient. <sighs> you have a sweet kiss, my pearl. Was that all right? He smiles gently, rubbing his thumb across your cheek. I'm glad. Being able to kiss you is... lovely. I do hope you'll allow me more chances in the future, but... Ah... Has he... ever been gentle with you? I see. Well, admittedly... I'm not usually the pin against a wall and growl in the air, man, myself, but <laughs> I can see the appeal. Oh, I do suppose I get that way a bit when it comes to uh, the summer solace, but that's basically a Rasanian thing. To your surprise, he blushes. Well, let's... Uh, <clears throat> Gods, why does this always sound so strange when explaining it to land dwellers? It's our uh, mating season, I guess would be the best way to put it. The more dominant among us get a bit more temperamental and uh, randy. We posture about like men in a gladiator ring, have a drink, then return to normal a few days later. It's honestly more comical, uh, for me at least. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I'm no warrior, yet my fins will stick up and I still swagger around, flirting like, <laughs> flirting like I'm the top bull. <laughs> I hope, at the very least, you'll find me trying to growl in your ear. A little funny. <laughs> it is a funny image, isn't it? Hey, Landy, you look like you've got some real child-rearing hips. How's about I bite the back of your neck? <laughs> oh. You know, I hope you'll forgive me saying this, but uh, Alistair would probably be able to glare most of the bulls and such into <laughs> submission. I'd pay good coin to see that. He's smaller than most bulls, but, I, but I'd adore seeing him trying to wrestle a uh, mare twice his size into submission. Bitching the entire time about how, if you were one of my soldiers, I'd have a baby in you by now. Ra 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 ra. To your surprise, you laugh, and Yvonne smiles warmly. <laughs> it's nice to see you laugh, my pearl. To see you smile. Maybe you'll indulge me in one more kiss. Hmm? Before you can lean in or pull away, you hear a commotion ring out from down the hall. What on earth? What was all that clattering and shouting just now? 
The two of you exchange looks and hurry out of the quarters and towards the commotion, finding two guards splayed out in pools of blood. The guns. Wait, there's something going on in Alistair's room. You race in and see Alistair struggling with a cloaked figure twice his size, teeth grit and brow knotted. <clears throat> Come on then, you cloaked bastard. Finish your job and cut me down. No, my love, get back. Hang on, Alistair. Try and hold the assassin still. Oh, of course, how <clears throat> silly of me. I intended to dance with them. Yvonne chants something in his language, and an icicle forms above his open palm. Once formed, he promptly hurls the sharpened spike through the assassin, who cries out before toppling on their side. Alastair opens his arms for you, panting. <sighs> I'm fine. I could have handled it. Are you all right, my love? Your king exhales through his nose, looking especially annoyed. Thank you, Ivan. You're welcome. The assassin took out the guards at your door, hm? They didn't stand a chance, but they fought valiantly regardless. I have the utmost respect for them holding their guard as they did. If, uh, if their families require a stipend, that is very kind, but I'll handle it. Dead sigil on the assassin. Ivan kneels by the body and examines it with a frown. This is the sigil of Viros. Why on earth would an assassin from the far north come here? Especially for you, Alistair. Finish the job while I'm less protected, I imagine. <sighs> Shh, love. It's okay. No, no, I'm fine. I promise. Love, you're shaking. What? Your head is ringing. You remember the sight of the king slumped over his throne, not answering your usual warm greetings. Remember approaching him. Remember realizing that the smile you were looking at wasn't a messy grin, but a slashed throat. Love. Love. They're having a panic attack, Alistair. Here, out of the room. Let's get you sat down, my pearl. They're having a what? This is normal for us. And that's a fucking problem. Now get your muscled ass out here and help me. Alistair tosses him a furious look, but both men dutifully escort you away from the massacre. Until you're all sat in the royal quarters. Breathe. Breathe. Talk when you're ready. We are here. You forget your king is there, and so much pours out of you as Yvonne holds you, rubbing your back. Uh, I didn't... No, that you were the one that found Father's body. He never told me. He just burst into my room when that assassin was preparing to finish the job. Why did you never tell me? Something in Alistair's voice almost dies. You didn't want me to blame you any more than I already did. Shh, he doesn't blame you. He blames himself and he sees you as the one remaining good part of himself, which leads to him, well, blaming you, I suppose. Alistair turns away slightly, troubled. Right, so we had an assassin lose that was good enough to avoid my magical wards and good enough to take down my guards. An assassin with a great interest in Alistair, apparently. <sighs> Gods only know how many heirs have been listening to coordinate such a movement. Then we must act quickly if we are to safeguard your kingdom. Both our kingdoms. It would have been easy for your kingdom to have blamed Rassan and had Elisteb been assassinated here. Well then. Yvonne turns to Alistair, all business. What do you recommend, Alistair? You're... you're asking me. Fine. Fine. We hold up until early morning. Then we move in the shadows to review the ledges and interview guards. Someone will know something, and, before you ask, no, I will not leave my love side until this is dealt with. Well, I hope you're a cuddler, then. Excuse me? If you're not leaving their side, then that means you're sleeping in our bed with us. 
You don't seem the cuddly sort, but I've been wrong before. Now, now let us secure these quarters. Alistair, please do your best to assure them that you're fine while I put up wards. All right? Alistair sits by you, hands fidgeting as they rest in his lap. I... Uh, I'm not good at this, but... Uh, I'm not hurt, okay? I'm alive. And even if I weren't, it wouldn't be your fault. I'd... Uh, he exhales once more, eyes down. <sighs> Thank you for worrying about me. Do you... I can hold you if you feel me worthy. Uh, oh. Oh, I missed... Shh. Let me run my fingers through your hair and just rest. Your king will protect you. Always. Always. 